there's this one thing I could never do, and that's grow plants. Every time I have any plant in my house, it pretty much always dies. And so over the years and after killing lots and lots of plants, obviously by accident, many of my friends started to give me all sorts of advice on how to become basically a slightly better plant parent. Or I guess advice on how to take care of plants just a little bit better. And one of the strangest advices I've heard from someone else was to basically start talking to plants or start playing music to them. Turns out a lot of people out there, especially people with plants, often play music for them and all of them claim that it seems to work. In a sense that it helps plants grow bigger, grow a little bit stronger and even prevents certain problems. And to my scientific mind at first this made no sense. This just sounded like some kind of a fairy tale or some kind of an urban legend. But turns out that there might be some scientific evidence behind this after all. And so, how wonderful person, this is Anton. In this video, we're going to be discussing the idea behind music, sound and plants, but specifically focusing on a recent discovery in regards to the species you see right here, Trichoderma harzianum. Not a plant, not an animal, but a fungi. And a very well designed experiment that definitively shows music, or more technically, sound, seems to have a dramatic effect on this fungus and by extension a lot of different plants. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but let's start with a brief history of the research. A research that basically doesn't really make sense. And that's because we know for a fact plants don't have any means to perceive sound or music, at least based on the cell structure and all of the organs they possess. So how can they possibly be influenced by music or sound and what could possibly change their growth and change their health in a sense if there is some sound around them. Well, previously there was an assumption that maybe sound waves, because these are mechanical interactions, stimulate plant cells by allowing them to grow stronger or bigger or by possibly triggering something inside. But here's the thing, that's just like a placeholder explanation that does not have any physical proof behind it and there is really no evidence for any of this. Despite of this, there is no shortage of studies and different types of research that seems to definitively show that certain sounds and certain noises seem to have an effect on plants of all sorts. For example, here is a study from 2014 that was able to show that different types of music seems to have different types of effects on a specific type of a rose. Interestingly, it seemed to enjoy classical music and certain types of Indian music, but really disliked rock. But here the problem was that this was a one-person study and it was never really replicated again. Here though we had another study from 2018 that once again demonstrated how various types of frequencies affected plant growth and leaf development depending on the frequency played. Here they actually used different types of frequencies and different types of volume, observing different types of results. But one of the criticisms for this paper was that there might have been not enough control here and there could have been some additional factors at work here that were not previously considered. And so despite the intriguing discovery here, there were still some doubts about the actual effects. Here is a more recent study from 2020 that once again played different types of music for alpha, alpha and lettuce plants, observing somewhat similar effects. And another earlier study that focused on different types of music again, once again observing different effects depending on the type of music. And it obviously did not have to be music. In this particular study, researchers focused on specific frequencies and observed how various frequencies seem to have different effects. But once again, the setup here was not actually controlled very well and so in some sense all of this could be really explained through some kind of an additional factor that was not considered. In other words, without an actual explanation for how all of this works and more importantly why this works, all of these were super intriguing discoveries but they could actually have entirely different explanations with the sound and music just being some kind of a coincidence. But then there was actually one intriguing study that did find one specific effect. And in this case, this study even provided an extremely detailed and specific explanation. This involved flowers and specifically pollinating flowers that required pollinators like bees in order to reproduce. And the focus here was Inothera dramondi, with the discovery being that these flowers start to vibrate mechanically in response to the noise resembling the buzzing of the bee. In other words, the acoustic sound produced by the bee's wings would actually cause the flower to vibrate, which would then cause a response inside the flower, forcing it to produce sweeter nectar within approximately 3 minutes. 
And in this case, this was believed to be a kind of a pollinating response evolved over millions of years of interacting with bees. And so in this case, one type of sound definitively caused a physical response. In other words, this flower was basically serving as a kind of a auditory sensory organ, with the vibration and the nectar response only responding to certain frequencies. With the study also suggesting that certain flower shapes might have been actually selected by evolution to affect hearing ability of various plants. Or I guess calling it hearing here is maybe a little bit of a misnomer. This is just a physical response based on vibrations, and so it would be erroneous to assume that plants actually hear anything. But they do seem to respond to a sound of a flying bee, which in some sense could maybe explain why some flowers respond to certain music simply because it contains similar frequencies. But obviously there would be no explanation for why classical music seems to help flowers and different other plants, even not pollinating plants, whereas harsher metal music or rock music seems to induce stress. Yet this is precisely what's been discovered in a lot of these previous studies. For example, higher yield of sweet peppers, cucumbers, tomatoes, spinach, cotton, rice, wheat, lettuce, everything grew approximately 20-30% more when classical music was played. It even seemed to strengthen the immune system of various plants, overall making these plants much stronger. But here we have to be really careful. A lot of this was still based on somewhat preliminary studies without any follow-ups, and in many cases this also ended up promoting somewhat unusual claims. For example, claims that maybe plants could feel, possibly had intelligence, or that they even contained consciousness. And that's maybe going a little bit too far because there's literally zero evidence for any of this, and here we're just basically anthropomorphizing everything. Assuming plants have human emotions and human feelings is maybe not the best approach. And so for a lot of these larger claims, there is still no proof whatsoever. We need to have more tests, more controlled experiments, and, most importantly, all of this has to have a very specific explanation. And, well, looks like we might have at least one explanation from this recent study. We have at least one study that controlled everything – soil, temperature, sunlight – and was able to discover something really intriguing. And here we had a very specific experiment. This is based on a study by Jake Robinson and his team. And the setup was pretty simple. Here we had an isolated container with plant pots receiving sound as something inside of them grew. But the focus was not plants. It was actually this. Trichoderma harzianum, which is basically a fungus, but an extremely important fungus. Possibly one of the most important fungi when it comes to plants and plant growth. This fungus is present in pretty much all soil containing plants, and it's almost always part of the colony inside the plant roots. And it's actually believed to dramatically enhance growth of plants, but most importantly, it's known to dramatically increase immune system while also acting as a kind of a parasite for various pathogenic fungi which can generally hurt plants. In other words, it doesn't just help plants, it also seems to kill anything that tries to hurt plants. And so here some of this fungus was grown with acoustic stimulation, but it was just white noise. So essentially we had conditions with crackling white noise or nothing. And as you can see, the effects were quite dramatic. Even after just 30 minutes of white noise every day, after 5 days this fungus would grow much much larger than the fungus that grew in silent conditions. Suggesting that high frequency crackling noise seemed to dramatically encourage the growth of this fungus, allowing it to produce spores much much faster than typical. And though it's obviously not clear why this fungus seems to grow better in noisy conditions, this potentially could explain why those plants were growing much better when there was noise around them. In other words, if there's more of this fungus around those plants, they will naturally become stronger, have better immune system, and grow much faster than other plants. In other words, at least one implication from this study is that the noise might actually affect the fungus and not the plants. And so the main conclusion from this study is that playing certain sounds indeed promotes healthier soil and may dramatically improve agricultural growth. But it has to be a specific sound, because a previous study from like 4 years ago basically discovered something else. Here the noise of a refrigerator seemed to encourage growth of a different fungus that usually causes plants to rot and may even promote disease in various plants. Specifically higher frequencies, above 5000 Hz, seem to dramatically increase the growth of this fungus, causing various plants to suffer as a result which might explain why those other plants did not like certain types of music, such as metal music. It often contains a lot of high-frequency sounds, 
which might have instead encouraged the growth of this fungus. And so based on these studies, we can basically assume that maybe the music helps plants because it actually helps fungus, which is almost always present inside those plants. But it still doesn't obviously explain why. Why does this fungus and this fungus grow better in certain frequencies? Why do they produce more spores in certain noises? And why exactly did any of this even evolve? Now the chances are, just like in flowers, this might have some kind of a mechanical activation explanation. We just don't really know what it is yet. Although we do know that a lot of fungi do actually produce extremely similar effects to what we sometimes detect in various neurons. To be more exact, we know fungal networks can actually produce nerve-like electrical activity that has been detected in a lot of different underground networks. Here's actually one of the more recent studies from Andrew Adamatsky that explores the idea of this unusual language of fungi, which essentially seems to be the result of electrical activity inside the fungal networks. But right now all of these are just individual discoveries without an actual connection, and so we still have no idea what's going on. Nevertheless, these are super exciting discoveries and will definitely help us understand plants and fungi just a little bit better in years to come. And because now we have so much evidence that sounds indeed seem to influence fungi and plants, we can now almost definitively say that using certain types of music indeed seems to help plants grow stronger. We just don't exactly know why. And so once there are some additional discoveries, or someone else discovers something else mind-blowing, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.